What's going on guys? So we are still here at the Houston RV show and next to me I ran into a good friend of mine. What's up y'all? You remember Miles from Miles RVs? If you don't know he has branched out on his own. He has yes. cut that umbilical cord and he is doing his own thing now. How's it yeah. feel? It feels amazing. So this was a long time coming. I've had a lot of stuff on my mind in the works for the past year before I was at a dealership working specifically with only the brands that were at the dealership that I worked at. So I have now, like you said, cut that umbilical cord and am now free to show any RVs out here, which is what we're doing now, taking a look at a Durango Gold product out here that I've never had access to before and I'm really excited about because there are a lot of cool things to look at here. Yeah, and this is a mid bunk, so you guys know I have a huge thing for mid bunks and this is going to be something that's really special because when we were shopping for a new mid bunk yeah. or I guess when I was collaborating with Coachman to build yeah. a new mid bunk they uh I got a lot of comments from folks that said this should be a brand we look at yeah. but you know what before we kick the video off I got to do the thing I always do yeah. we got to look at the numbers absolutely yep hang oh. tight guys I'll be right back Okay, so this unit is gonna have a 16,000 pound gross vehicle weight rating and an 1,890 pound cargo capacity. It's gonna ride on 16 inch tires. And uh, yeah, there's not a heck of a lot of information on this. G-rated tires, which are really nice. Okay, up front, you can see all the storage. Has an interesting looking step right here. I'm not really sure what this is. It looks like it is part of maybe a grill or a table, but it does have a graystone pellet grill. So that's kind of cool. Over here you have your hydraulic storage as well as some storage above it. You have your battery box down here as well as your solar charge controller up here. And then your battery disconnect. This is actually really cool how they've set all this up. It's just very intuitive. It's set up in a smart way. Okay, so Miles. Yeah. This is a cool unit. This and is really cool. I don't film a lot of Durangos, so yeah. this is gonna and kind I of have, be unique for both of us. I've never filmed a Durango. Yes. This is my first time being on camera with a Durango Gold. Have you filmed a KZ product before? Nope. Oh, wow. So this is entirely new to you. I actually convinced my brother to buy a KZ travel trailer after Hurricane Michael. Interesting. So let's kind of start here with, this does ride on a drop frame. Drop frame specs here are, it's got an 8-inch I-beam, and it may be attached to a 12-inch I-beam, but we'll check when we get over there. I like the diamond plate. It's pretty dang nice. And this storage space is just, I mean, this huge. is bigger than most businesses. It really is. I like that they actually put their, uh, the inverter here in this little space. This is kind of a cool spot for it because it's easy to see, easy to service, easy to turn on and off. Really cool. Nice thick baggage doors. I like that. Solid slam latch doors yep. on that as well that you have there. Absolutely. All and underneath the awning. Everything now is prepped for a Fury on side view camera, so nothing special. But it is cool to see because... I guess there are some units that aren't still. You got the screen defender here. Got the little screen shot to pull the door shut. This has the hydraulic level up auto leveling system. All right. Let's kind of step around rack and pinion slide. And this is on a, so it's on a 10 inch I-beam frame, but it's got a huge boxed section underneath the I-beam to support the suspension kind of cool tires are the high spec g-rated tires and it has the equiflex suspension you know i haven't seen a lot of trailers with equiflex anymore most have moved to road armor but that is a it's a good suspension setup it has the frameless windows so what do you like about this one so far so this is what really separates this from so many other things out there in the market this is not a toy haul so this is a mid bunk fifth wheel traditional style fifth wheel with a patio there are, I don't even know if there's another thing out there in the market. Never seen one like yeah, it before. I, just in the KZ lineup that they have options like this with a patio that are not a toy hauler coming from a sales position. This was one of the most requested things I got asked for and I just couldn't provide it because I didn't sell KZ products. But I knew about it so I still could recommend it but I couldn't sell it which would just devastate me. Well, and to be yeah. honest, you don't see a lot of these. No, so, you don't. It's very uncommon. Very, yeah, very you got to wonder if they have some type of a patent on this design. But check this out. So you have that whole toy hauler back patio feel yep. in a rear living room mid-bunk fifth wheel. It's literally everything that you get in a patio set up on a toy hauler. Yep. It's just a traditional fifth wheel. And it does have a sliding glass door here. 
so that is going to give you that you know protection from the climate and stuff if you want to keep this patio open you don't have to close this up necessarily to protect yourself from the elements things like that and it still gives you plenty of living space and this basically just extends your living space to the outside yep and you have an awning above it as well and it's wired for furion wireless backup camera so what's missing though is a giant sofa yeah. at the end so yeah. typically rear living room you're gonna have a giant sofa that folds out in almost like a king-size bed yeah. in this case you're gonna have two recliners yeah. two but independent recliners so you kind of move these around however you best see fit still get the pull-out sofa but they do position this directly across from your tv yep so that's a little bit of an interesting take because like uh, jd said there you usually have the recliners on that wall and now you're getting a different setup with that. So maybe not your most ideal comfortable seating position in front of the TV, but that is a little exchange that you get for having the patio. And you know the other side that kind of makes this nice is, I mean, I think all of us at some point have fallen asleep on a yeah. recliner. Yeah. So you could still technically sleep on these things, but oftentimes when there's a big sofa back here, you have one tall person yeah. that's roughly 6'3", yeah. that likes to lay across the whole thing, <laughs> and true. it becomes a one-person sofa. Yeah. So with this type of setup, it actually gives you the flexibility of knowing that you're always going to have seating for two. That's, yeah, that's a good point. I wouldn't have even thought about that. Because you're the guy that wants the whole sofa. Exactly. Yeah, so. <laughs> exactly. Great point. Solid surface countertops. Um, I like how they also made the little indention here. Typically, you see the covers with a hole in the center that you pull out. But it looks like they actually indented the quarry in here so you can actually get it out. Single basin versus dual basin. I prefer the single basin. I, I prefer like, the dual basin. Yeah, so there's always those different preferences. I think the most perfect situation is when you have like that really big basin here and then the smaller one. That way you get the kind of best of both worlds. But this but that's dual preference. basin though. That is. That's dual basin. That is this perfect. this would be my preferred choice, honestly. So Why? I just like having a big sink. I actually have a dual basin sink at home and I do not like it. Really? Basin, but they're smaller. So it's just, I don't know. I like having the bigger space. But so when I cook at night and I make a mess and I know my wife has already washed and put everything away and now I know I got to wash my dish, <laughs> yeah. I wash it here and I put it here to dry. Uh, okay. But that the sink's sense. huge. It but huge. But with the single basin, I wash it here and then I put it here and then everything I wash here gets over here and so... Right. Yeah. It's going it's, it's gonna be the one thing that keeps us from being friends, man. I know. I guess so. I guess <laughs> so. But we can probably agree that the insignia cooktop that you get here with this oven definitely one of the best ones that you can get in a fifth wheel especially yes just for the sheer size totally agree and i like the fact that graystone is now stepping up yeah. and they're creating one that's very similar to this yeah. so, so there's more choices yeah we'll see that in most options out there in the market something that at least um is identical to that or has very close similar versions yep you're absolutely right um, also like the fact that they give you a convection microwave, full size insignia convection microwave and a lot of prep space around the stove. So this is something, I don't know how long Durango has been doing this, but I know that the folks at Alliance kind of prided themselves in giving you all this space around the actual stove. And I love seeing that because yeah, if you're cooking something, it's nice to have, you know, if I'm battering some fish right here, I can take it and throw it straight on as opposed to battering it over here and throwing it on. Yeah. So that's really nice. What about cabinetry? Are these soft clothes? They are soft closing. Soft closing and, and magnetic. I always like, like to see that. Too. Oh, yeah, that's really nice. They have some really nice quality features to them. They um, really I'm do. I'm pretty impressed as we go through this. And this Durango Gold that we're in, from what I understand, is their higher tier of mm -hmm. quality. So you are in a higher tier of quality from like their Durango line that they also yep. make. MSRP 162683, which I guarantee the price is a lot lower and it's probably posted yeah, around here yeah, somewhere. I think it's on the slide out box. Outside. Yeah. All right, you open that door, I'll open this door. Pantry space with motion detection light. Very cool. Entry into your mid bunk. One of my favorite floor plans is the mid bunk because it gives you isolation from the master bedroom for the kids. It puts them in a nice area, but it doesn't take up so much room right. that it becomes kind of a nuisance to have a mid bunk, yeah. which is nice. And then another thing that was really unique, you have a TV already installed in here. This is another rare thing where most mid bunks do not already come equipped with a TV. So you have that as well. Yep. And I like the, I always like it when they put the top bunk up here. I know some manufacturers don't, they just put the, the little micro love seat here, but the top bunk to me just gives you practical using space that you otherwise wouldn't have if you didn't have this up here. My daughter loves being on the top bunk. Yeah. And the only reason that I feel they don't do this in some models is so you can have the windows. And I would much rather just have the additional usable space 
over some windows. Absolutely, because so. you can even store stuff up here. Exactly. Yep, there's a lot of function here. And what a lot of people don't realize, you can take everything out of here. And you can turn this into like an office or a music room or whatever you want to use it for. I've seen that a lot in these mid box models. Yep. All right. Nice outlet on the side. Freestanding table. I'm sure the other two chairs will probably be under the bed. Blackout blinds. Anything notable in here you want to talk um, about? There are also day shades on here. Oh, so well. this has day night. Yeah, day and night shades on here. Very nice. And that's pretty much everything in the living area. Has the one control panel here. Nice little coat closet. All right. Now this is a nice yet interesting entry <laughs> into the bunk. Yeah. It's actual steps, not a ladder, but um, it's a very tall top step to get up there. It is a very tall top step. So yeah, that was yeah. something the first time I looked at this too, I was like that. I mean, I think it's better than a ladder for sure, but nonetheless, it is a big uh, like last step that you're going up there to get onto the platform of the loft. Absolutely. Then when we look up here in the loft area, it's a typical size loft in these types of units, but you know, honestly, I think I would have, for the first time ever, I think I probably would have preferred like a wooden ladder that has actual deep steps on it. Only because that top step right there, especially kids waking yeah. up at night, it might be problematic uh, for them. That's a good point. That's a good point. But I'm going to have to disagree. I've just had so many people complain about how unsafe the ladder feels. I think they might prefer this. And I'm just trying mm -hmm. to think through the lens of like what my customers have expressed to me. So I don't know. Y'all let JD know in the comments down below what you think. Yeah. And I'm not talking about the normal ladder with like yeah. little round rungs. I'm talking about the one that has actual like oh. steps on okay, it. Okay. Yeah. If you have actual steps, then yeah, yeah but that would be. That only would be only because of this. I feel they could have done something a little different yeah. here. Yeah. I agree though. Checking out the bathroom. Nice one piece shower stall, porcelain foot flush toilet. Got your fantastic fan up top. You don't have a medicine cabinet behind the mirror, but you have these little side cabinets, which are actually pretty nice, and there's a good amount of room in there. Yes. Solid surface countertop, undermount stainless sink. What do you think? It's a little non-traditional to your layout a little bit, just yeah. mainly with the medicine cabinet set up here. I mean, this, and a lot of brands, I feel like you see the storage on yep. the other side of the shower, so it's kind of nice that it's actually right here where you would be doing all of your getting ready. Absolutely. So, nice little touch with that. The only challenge, though, you're sitting on the toilet. Here, demonstrate. Let's demonstrate. Yeah, yeah. You're sitting on the toilet. Yeah. Oh man, I'm out of toilet paper. Oh, where? Yeah, oh, I guess, oh, I guess you could probably, put it there. You could put it here, but most people. Yeah, I guess. Probably wouldn't that you would actually put it there. No, you, you got me on this one. It should yeah. be under there, yeah, that's or one of these bottom drawers. But man, now that you mention that, though, I don't even know that there's a toilet paper holder in here, which is a little interesting. Sometimes you don't I'm, see them. Yeah, I'm searching for it and I'm like, I guess this model, this brand, don't get a paper towel holder roll. Yeah. Oh, but you can put one somewhere. Yep. All right, checking out the bedroom, which has the tilting bed. Kind of a cool option with the oversized comforter on it. <laughs> King size bed. Um, so a lot of manufacturers have moved to this whole, let's put the nightstands way up high. Um, I don't know if I have a scolding hot cup of coffee and I'm watching TV at night that I want to put it way up here. That makes sense. I'm, I'm a fan of them still sticking out right here, but I don't like the ones that overlap the bed. Right. Check out the storage there. That's a CPAP holder if I've ever seen one. Absolutely. You know, people always ask me, what's my obsession with CPAP? <laughs> it's not my obsession. It's no. the fact that customers look for that. They do. I get that request when I was in sales all the time. People looking for that storage space. Where are they going to put it? Where are you going to plug it in? Things like that yep. in the bedroom. And they've thought about it. And it's always nice to see manufacturers think about that. Yeah, Orange style door, yeah. whisper quiet AC units. Check this out right here. Very impressive getting a fireplace in the bedroom. Another request I know I get a lot of people asking for. So yeah. Giving you an electric heat source in the bedroom. Also a little bit of ambiance to your feel in the bedroom as well. But definitely a very practical electrical heat source yep. that you get. I think there's a certain amount of, of safety people also associate with these versus having their furnace running at night. Oh, yeah. You know, absolutely. Yeah, just to be able to use it, close the door, hot air coming out. Yeah. Absolutely. A great Very cool. Additional feature you get that you don't see all that often in this one. Nope. Few and far between. Nice storage here. Little laundry storage right there. And we have a ton of storage up here, actually. Interesting shelf system. I'm going to open this up so he can yeah. bask in the glory of this front <laughs> closet. Yeah, it's interesting. You have kind of this divider wall here, so it is kind of tiered off. 
This is where washer dryer will go. So chairs here for the dining table. Take these rods out, washer dryer. You can get a stackable washer and dryer in yeah. this space and you know have those capabilities to do extended camping or full-time camping oh, that's if cool. that's what you're looking to do. Very, very cool. All right, I think that'll wrap it up for this unit. We're not gonna spend too much time looking at the other half of this unit, but um, what do you think overall? I think this is a really, really neat option for people looking for that patio in a traditional style fifth wheel. And it's actually not the only Durango Gold model that has that patio off the back on a traditional fifth wheel. Yep. It's just their mid bunk model. So it's a really neat option for people looking for that. And it's something that I, like I said, to my knowledge, it is the only product line that is going to have that feature on it yep. in a fifth wheel. And it makes it a very, very unique and easy to like floor plan yeah. because it adds a characteristic people always like about toy haulers yeah. to an RV that's not specifically set up as a toy hauler. Yeah. It's a mid bunk. Really cool. Yeah. Well, Miles, maybe we'll, we'll check out a few other RVs and do some collaboration while we're here, brother. Yeah, Always yeah. appreciate it. The feedback was awesome. Uh, guys, leave feedback below. Leave a comment below. What do you think about uh, about this unit as well? Do you agree with our sink ideas, our stair ideas, the different things that we talk about? Because that's the cool thing about visiting different YouTube channels. You get different perspective on things. Absolutely. So, yeah, I hope you all enjoyed. Again, leave your comments down below. And, yep. and check out Miles RV. So you want to give a plug to your yeah, channel real quick? Absolutely. Yeah. So my channel is just Miles RVs. My name is spelled with a Y. So it's M Y L E S RVs. That's the name of my channel. Um, as of filming this video, I am right on the cusp. I'm like less than 200 followers or subscribers away from 100,000. So pretty excited about that. Um, it's been three and a half years now that I've been making RV videos and this is our second time collaborating here on the Big Truck Big RV channel so I'm really excited about that so go check that out and again leave your comments down below of your thoughts. Thank you. I appreciate it guys. If you haven't had a chance take a moment subscribe to the channel give me a thumbs up. We'll talk to you again real soon.